our theme at CLF in the month of March is interdependence. And when we were thinking about as a collective team at CLF, what it was that we wanted to say about this theme, about interdependence, something that we all needed to hear in this time, in this world right now, we thought about the tension between interdependence and individualism. And the tension, especially, that so many people seem to be caught in that individualism is so valued in our society, in the United States, and in Unitarian Universalism. Individualism is so is, is held in such high regard that interdependence sometimes falls by the wayside, and it's unfortunate. In fact, it's central to our theme tonight to think about whether as a liberal religion, and we claim to be a liberal religion, individualism need at all be a part of who we are. Some people, some people will claim that individualism is central to liberalism. Chris Hedges certainly does. In his book, The Death of Liberalism, he says that the moral primacy of the individual person against any collectivity is an absolutely essential, essential feature of liberalism, and that would extend to liberal religion. There are those out there who are arguing that forcefully, forcefully about Unitarian Universalism right now, that our understanding of, of a collective good, that our understanding of the need for accountability to something beyond ourselves and our being and our own thoughts and our own minds, that something beyond ourselves is in direct conflict with our claim to be a liberal religion. And I'm here today to tell you that that's simply not true, and it never has been true, because that view of liberalism, that narrow view of liberalism as focusing primarily on the self, on the individual, and as Chris Hedges writes, the moral primacy of the individual person against any collectivity, that's not the liberalism that, that Unitarian Universalism has ever claimed to be. And I make that claim based on the theological writings of James Luther Adams, famous 20th century Unitarian and Unitarian Universalist theologian. And the work of James Luther Adams is not without its problems. Uh, and yet he, more than anyone else, defined the liberalism that Unitarian Universalism embraces um, as who we are. And James Luther Adams liked to rail against what he called fissiparous individualism. And here's your $10 word for the night, fissiparous. Fissiparous individualism is the kind of individualism that divides us that divides us into separate parts and groups that are not connected with one another, that are not interdependent with one another. And James Luther Adams railed against it. He said, this kind of individualism is toxic. It is toxic to our society. It is toxic to our religion. It is toxic to us being who we need to be in this world. He railed against it again and again. And when he defined what he meant by liberal religion, what, what he meant by liberalism, there were a couple things that he wrote that I think are worth holding up. First, he wrote that nothing in liberalism is exempt from criticism. And that means that what we believe and what we think and what we hold and what we bring is not exempt from being put through the lenses of other people's lives and experiences, right? We do not 
come as the end all be all of the, the pinnacle of theological wonder that some of us think perhaps we are. We are obligated in a liberal religion to pass our lives through the fire of other people's thought, not just our own thought. Nothing is exempt from criticism, wrote James Luther Adams. More importantly, though, he wrote in his famous essay on the five smooth stones of liberal religion, that we as Unitarian Universalists, we as people who claim a liberal religious tradition, we deny the immaculate conception of virtue. And we affirm the necessity of social incarnation. What he meant by that is goodness does not exist in a vacuum. There is nothing that can be labeled as good, as virtuous, as beautiful, as wonderful without filtering it through the societal ramifications of that. Goodness happens through action, through relationship. He wrote, there is no such thing as goodness as such, except in a limited sense there is no such thing as a good person as such. There is the good husband, the good wife, the good worker, the good employer, the good lay person, the good citizen. The decisive forms of goodness in society, wrote James Luther Adams, are institutional forms. No one can properly put faith in merely individual virtue, even though that is a prerequisite for societal virtues. James Luther Adams, well before Chris Hedges, defined Unitarian Universalist liberalism in a way that made it very clear that we are accountable to one another, that if we are actually a religion, if we are actually a community, then we have to be interdependent with one another. We cannot simply be individuals. I am also quite taken by the writing of Robin Wall Kimmerer. Many of you are probably familiar with Robin Wall Kimmerer. She is a Potawatomi, and she is also an ecologist and botanist. And so she brings her scientific training and her indigenous faith and, um, and experience and, and melds them and merge them and um and brings us great wisdom about this so my favorite of her essays and it's hard to pick a favorite because everything she writes is so hard. but my favorite of her essays is called the council of pecans and robin wall Kimmerer writes about pecan trees that in a particular area all of the pecan trees in a particular year either flower and bear fruit or none of them do. She writes, if one tree fruits, they all fruit. There are no soloists, not one tree in a grove, but the whole grove, not one grove in the forest, but every grove. All across the county, all across the state, the trees act not as individuals, but somehow as a collective. Exactly how they do this, we don't yet know. But what we see is the power of unity. What happens to one happens to us all. We can starve together or feast together. All flourishing, she writes, is mutual. All flourishing is mutual, says Robin Wall Kimmerer. We, all of us, need all of us to make it, says Ninan Soto. We, as Unitarian Universalists, need our connection with one another. We need our accountability to one another. We need our accountability in oppression work, in anti-oppression work, to those who experience oppression in order to make it real, in order to make it right, in order to incarnate goodness in this world. We need social interactions and institutional forms of goodness. All flourishing is mutual, writes Robin Wall. Kimmerer, about pecan trees, yes, but also humanity. 
My dear friend, the late Alandria Williams once wrote, to everyone that has the courage, the power, the ability to co-create what we want and need, you are the visionary, you are the hope, you are our ancestors' dreams. No, you might not ever end up on some list somewhere, but you are on a list in someone's heart and mind. And if it's, how, if it's in how you move in the world so people can see by example, you are the embodiment of what we need, the embodiment of radical love, care, and sanctuary. Alandria wrote this as a call for all of us to understand that we are connected to one another, that our collective power as an interdependent community is so much greater than our individual power. To those who would still claim that individualism is necessary for us to be a liberal faith, I have to come back then to what covenant means. Fisiparous individualism, as James Luther Adams would say, drives us apart. Covenant brings us together. And so what it is that we believe, what it is that we think, what it is we have come to know has to be shared in our community and we have to open ourselves to the feedback that comes with covenant, to the constructive work that comes with being tied to one another, because all of us need all of us to make it. We are interdependent and Unitarian Universalists affirm and promote that interdependence in this larger, grander ecological sense, but also in human community, in human relationships. We need one another. We need one another. We need one another to be better as individuals and to be better together as a community. We need one another to build that new way that is possible. We need one another to see what the new way might be so that we can build it. We need one another. Let us rejoice in that good news. Amen.